The Anime begins at night with a young girl named Kana secretly photographing another girl exchanging briefcases full of money with a boy. They belong to the Department of Public Security and General Affairs, and it seems like they are finalizing some deal. However, when Kana believes they have left the scene, a car hits her. The girl from the photographs appears, erasing the evidence Kana had taken and then leaves, leaving Kana on the ground. The next day, Ichisato gets ready for school and wakes up her neighbor and the protagonist of the story, Yuki Ojima. She jumps on him as he is still sleeping, but after throwing him out of bed, she pulls off his sheets to make him get up. Later, on their way to class, they meet their classmate Mifuyu, who notices Yuki has a mark on his face from his friend's hand. Trying to comfort him, Mifuyu is kind to him and Yuki gets excited, hugging Mifuyu and asking her to be his girlfriend. However, she replies that it's not possible because she already has a boyfriend, leaving Yuki sad. Shisato also plays along, making it clear it was all a performance. At school, when they enter the classroom, Yuki finds Morishita looking for something pink she lost. He asks Shisato if she's wearing anything pink today, leading to Shisato falling into his trap and getting scolded. Later, members of the Food Investigation Club arrive, and one of them has an accident with one of their inventions, filling the classroom with candies. Yum, another club member, brings a new product enjoyed by everyone, but Yuki saves Shisato from trying it as she doesn't like chocolate, the main ingredient. Hazuki, a teacher, arrives with bad news and after having a beer, informs the students that the club might be dissolved. During a school assembly, the General Affairs Department judges a student who is the current school president for not handling the student issue. They ask him to resign from the student council, but Shinonom Satsuki, the head of the Financial Affairs Department, disagrees with the president's dismissal. She accuses the General Affairs Department head of financial mismanagement and declares her intention to run for president in the upcoming elections. Some clubs, including the figurine and food investigation clubs, worry about possible dissolution. Yuki believes Shinonom is right, as some clubs misuse money on unnecessary things but Nan disagrees, stating that she will protest so that someone can taste the snacks she makes. She's out of doubts Shinonom will follow through with her plan once elected, but Hazuki reveals that Shinonom is her sister. The students are surprised and ask Hazuki to do something to save the club, but she refuses. Mayfu suggests supporting other candidates, such as Tatsumi Moheji from the General Affairs Department. They visit Tatsumi, who seems to be cheating, wearing a mask. Tatsumi gives them a prepaid card for the school store, but suddenly a girl crashes into Yuki, dropping a key with a clover-shaped keychain. Shisato decides not to support Tatsumi due to his cheating, and Hazuki proposes that someone from the club runs for president. Everyone agrees, and when Yuki asks who will be the candidate, he is surprised to find out they have chosen him. That evening, the student accused of neglecting the issue visits a girl in the hospital and informs her about the upcoming presidential elections. After what happened, Yuki wonders why he has to be the candidate, but one of the girls responds that it was his idea, and now he has to bear the consequences. They all support him, as he would be a popular candidate. The next day, Yuki has a dream of his childhood, where he and Shisato attend a wedding, and they ask the bride to attend their wedding when they grow up. The bride realizes they are in love, but too young to understand. Shisato tells her to extend her hand, and Yuki does, but he wakes up from the dream with Shisato beside him. She doesn't mind that he touched her and claims she was asking him questions while he slept. She lies, saying he told her he loves her and will never leave her. Yuki gets upset, throws her off the bed for lying, and Shisato, annoyed, asks him to get out of bed as they need to prepare for the elections. Meanwhile, at school, the club girls investigate Shinonome's candidacy and realize their club is at the top of the dissolution list. They believe they need to prepare Yuki as soon as possible. Shizano arrives and tells them that Yuki doesn't want to run and plans to leave the club. Yuki walks through the city, pondering why he has to do the hard work. The girl crashes into him, apologizes, and hurries away. Two other girls run past him, and when he tries to stand up, a bicycle hits him. Looking up, he sees Shinonum, and he apologizes about ten times. She tells him not to apologize repeatedly, and they exchange apologies. Shinonum finds him interesting and leaves. Meanwhile, Oboro calls Yuki suggesting their relationship was just for fun, and maybe he got tired of her. Yukai ends the call, and while heading to the lost and found room, he encounters the girl who bumped into him the day before. He returns the key she dropped, and she thanks him, mentioning she won't have to make a copy of her house key. She thinks he came to school just to return her key on a Sunday. Yuki corrects her, saying he came for the food investigation club. The girl introduces herself as Ami Isara, a first-year student, while Yuki walks through the school corridors, he reflects that he only encountered beautiful girls throughout the day. He bumps into what he believes is another beautiful girl, but it turns out to be two students who ask if he belongs to the Finance or General Affairs Club. 
Upon checking his ID, they realize he doesn't, and the association president arrives, apologizing and supporting Yuki's decision to run for president, as their club would dissolve otherwise. At the Fruit Club, the girls wonder how to convince Yuki to run and decide to create a great invention to save their club. Nan creates a blender to make the perfect sticky sweet, aiming to create a candy paradise. The machine goes out of control, covering the girls in sticky sweet. Yuke encounters Shinonome again, who greets him as Jima, the only name she remembers, and apologizes repeatedly, thinking it could be a good nickname. Yuki doesn't like it, but he helps her fix her bike's chain. In gratitude, she gives him her handkerchief to clean up. As they walk together, Yuki tells her about the club's desire for him to run for elections. Shinonome advises him to try as he won't know if he has a chance of winning without attempting. Yuki thanks her for the advice. Later, Yuki returns to the club to find everything in chaos due to the candy machine explosion. After cleaning up, Yuki gathers everyone and announces he'll fight for the club, but proposes choosing a representative together. Despite his endorsement of Chizato, who he believes possesses good leadership, courage, and decision-making abilities, Yuki wins the vote, leaving Chizato with only one vote from Yuki. She gets upset, thinking he wanted them to choose her. But the others were moved by Yuki's speech. Back home, Chisato tells Yuki he should have done what she suggested from the beginning. They see a chocolate stand and decide to buy some, but only Yuki tries it. The next day, Chisato secures a classroom to use as the campaign headquarters and appoints herself as the campaign leader. However, they realize they don't know where to start. Later, Hazuki explains that they must first pass the preliminary elections requiring at least 600 votes. The group wonders how to gather that many votes, suggesting ideas mostly centered around using funds to obtain sweets. At that moment, the current school president, Mori, arrives. Nan happily recognizes him, mentioning they were classmates. Mori reveals that he heard about Yuki's candidacy and came to ask for their help in the public order department's elections. The group is surprised by this unexpected request, and Hazuki suspects it's for the department's benefit. Mori acknowledges this, explaining that they don't want to relinquish the presidency to other departments, as winning in other elections would be challenging. He suggests Yuki, without any department affiliation, wins the elections, aiming out the playing field in the subsequent elections. Yuki questions why he was chosen, and Mori believes he has the potential to pass the preliminaries. Chizato and Yuki realize they can obtain votes from the club's plan for dissolution. Mori confirms this, as their endangered club makes it easier to gain trust. Oboro suggests that the General Affairs Department might also support the clubs, but Yuki confidently claims they will take things seriously after passing the preliminaries. He states that their public order department could gather around 400 votes, leaving the others to secure the rest. The girls get excited, believing they can reach the target with their friend's help. Mori assures them that they only need to get 200 votes and even if they decide to support them, it will be after the preliminaries. Hazuki, skeptical about Mori's intentions, asks him to take care of the students since they are good kids. Later, Mori suggests they don't need a manifesto at this stage, emphasizing the importance of getting 200 votes. He advises Yuki to visit club welcome committees and ask for their support. Before Yuki can do so, the president suggests he be accompanied by a girl, especially for the sports clubs. Chizato volunteers to accompany him as the campaign leader. Mori also asks Chizato to collect signatures, preventing people from breaking their promise. Two girls in the group feel uncomfortable with this, but Yuki convinces them that their success depends on two charming girls doing the job. Yuki and Chisato later meet with Garage and Ariak, members of other clubs requesting them to be the president and vice president of the campaign support club. They mention their opposition to Shinonone's manifesto, but express hesitancy. Ariak proposes conditions to help them. Meanwhile, Saru and Manzanaka use their charms to collect signatures, Morishita prints brochures, and Mori assists Mifuyu with reports. Hazuki encounters her sister Shinonim, questioning whether she wants to eliminate the food investigation club just to bother her. Shinonim denies it, stating it's about the club's activities. Hazuki feels relieved, stating she would feel guilty if it were her fault. Before leaving, Shinonim predicts she will surpass her and become president, a feat her sister couldn't achieve. Hazuki asks her to dismiss her if she hates her so much, but despite that, she requests her to put in effort for the elections and promises equal support for everyone as a teacher. Later, Yuki feels exhausted from talking to many strangers. Chizato seizes the opportunity to ask him to buy her a drink, and he agrees despite his fatigue. On the way, Yuki doesn't notice Shinonome approaching and informing him that they are now rivals. Before leaving, they wish each other a fair fight. Chizato, who had been observing, questions why Yuki speaks so kindly to the enemy. Yuki tries to divert her attention, but she insists on an explanation of his relationship with his rival. At night, Yuki goes shopping to prepare food. When he turns around, he notices Morishita hiding and watching him. Later, Yuki has dinner with his mother and Shisato keeps sending him messages. 
leading his mother to believe Chisato is his girlfriend, a claim Yuki denies. After dinner, Yuki leaves after a hug. That night, Morishita is alone, deeply contemplative with a precious object. It's a new day, and at school, Yuki observes the candidates, wondering if there's any chance of winning. As he leaves the hallway, he accidentally collides with some stairs, causing them to fall. Suddenly, he hears a noise and discovers Aomi holding onto the railing to avoid falling. Yuki helps her descend, and the girl congratulates him on running for elections, expressing her support. Their conversation is interrupted when two students pass by, mocking Aomi for smelling bad. Yuki gets upset and wants to teach him a lesson, but Aomi asks him not to intervene as she's used to such comments. Yuki does not understand how she can let it slide. Despite this, Aomi asks her friend to tell the truth about her smell. When Yuki smells her, he denies it but feels a bit emotional about the moment. Later, in the committee, the group realizes they need money for the elections and campaign. Mori arrives to help as the idea of using club funds for the campaign is rejected by Hazuki, labeling it as cheating. Mori suggests selling some items and Nam proposes selling the Ojima rolls, a fluffy bread with a smooth cream containing various fruits that create a perfect harmony of flavors. After this explanation, everyone craves the Ojima rolls, but Yuki wonders why they correctly named the rolls after him when everyone still calls him Oshima, a detail nobody cares about. Shizato asks how much they should sell the rolls for, and after Yuki does the calculations, they realize selling them at 100 yen won't be enough to reach their goal. Shisato has an idea but refuses to share it, requesting the preparation of 20 rolls. After resolving this issue, Mori moves on to the next one distribution. For the demonstration, he brings several of his old flyers, but they realize nobody would want products with Yuki's face on them. Morishida suggests putting the flyers on Oboro's yaw sticks. She requests around 300 sticks, and two girls rush out to consult with the committee if it's valid. After approval, they try to figure out how much they need to spend on flyers. They borrow money from the slightly intoxicated teacher, who lends them 30,000 yen. Later, the Yawa sticks arrive, and they realize they need to assemble a large quantity, feeling a bit discouraged. Nan, however, is the only one enthusiastic about it. Thanks to her invention, Hari Hari, they receive massages while assembling the packages to avoid stress. Even with that incentive, the group doesn't feel very motivated. Mori suggests that if they have more people, they'll finish faster, Meanwhile, Yuki notices several clubs trying to raise funds as he returns to school. On the way, he encounters Shinonome being questioned by a club facing dissolution, a sumo club. She explains that they found out about the misappropriation of funds for unnecessary meals. The large guy gets angry and tries to confront her, but realizing it's impossible, he breaks down in tears along with his companion. Shinonome leaves and notices Yuki nearby. Back at the committee, the girls look exhausted from assembling the sticks, including Nan, who was initially enthusiastic. Shinonome tells Yuki that many clubs misuse their funds, so her goal is to minimize their incorrect usage. Yuki says she's a bit strict, but she believes he's overestimating her, clarifying that she only cares about the school. If the school isn't managed properly, it will fall apart. Yuki suggests that eliminating some clubs isn't necessary for that purpose, but Shinonome remarks that he probably got distracted, asking him to read her manifesto carefully. At school, Aomi is working on her assignments and realizes she still has a long way to go. A group of girls arrives, bothers her, and takes her away. After what Shinonom said, Yuki begins searching for and reading the manifesto. One of the proposals is to eliminate scholarship students to prevent the harm they face. Meanwhile, Aomi is mistreated by the girls who took her away. Later, as Yuki, Chisato, and Mifu leave school, they come across Aomi. They don't realize she's being mistreated, but they still try to help her. However, she shouts at them not to interfere. The next day, Mifuyu is preparing her speech for the election. She's with Chisato, who is finishing assembling the Yawa sticks, the flyers, and Yuki, who has to start preparing the Ojima rolls. Mifuyu shares how her friend decided to run for elections to save his club, and she and her friends gather to support him. Chisato wanted to work hard to support him according to her feelings and with her best friend. At that moment, Chisato asked her friend if it's okay for her to work so hard on the speech since Yuki could help. Mifuyu believes it's unnecessary and Yuki confesses his love to her, thinking of not making her work, but she tells him she loves someone else. Of course, it's once again an act, without revealing that Chisato is the one who loves Yuki. Later, the protagonist starts preparing the Ojima roles, with Mifuyu accompanying him as she continues working on her speech. Concerned about her attendance in classes, Yuki asks if it's okay for her to be absent. She responds that she's always studying, so there's no problem with her skipping. Additionally, she owes Chisato a favor because when she started classes after repeating a year due to surgery, Chisato was the only one who treated her kindly and helped her get along with others. After preparing about six roles, Yuki observes Mifuyu still working on her speech. 
A young reporter named Shiohama Hidaka enters the club to ask Yuki some questions about the elections. However, she mispronounces his name, distracting Yuki, and he ends up answering the questions poorly, leaving him dissatisfied. Later, Mifuyu completes her speech, but she lies to Yuki, saying it's not finished yet, as he can only make eight rolls. Oboro arrives to tease Yuki, and after she leaves, Mifuyu continues writing while watching Yuki cook. She comments that he wants to spend more time with her, taking his time to make the pastries. However, Nan arrives to try to praise Yuki, so that he gives her some cake. Despite Yuki's initial refusal, he eventually agrees, unable to resist his friend's cute gestures, and Nan leaves the place happily. Later, Mifuyu continues commenting that they spend happy times alone. Still, noticing that Yuki looks a bit tired, she leaves to prepare tea for him. Hazuki arrives, insinuating herself to him, saying it's been a while since she made something delicious for him. Just as Mifuyu arrives, Hazuki makes an excuse to leave and Mifuyu asks her to focus only on Chisato and not look at other girls. Yuki understands the message. Ami arrives, set to help as scholarship students are assigned to assist with campaigns during elections. Yuki gets excited, thinking that fate brought them together, but the excitement doesn't last long as he senses a strange vibe from Mifuyu. Later, Ami introduces herself to the Food Research Club, and everyone is ready to start their sales at their booths. Thanks to President Mori, they secured a good spot near the stage. When sales begin, students are excitedly rushing into the hall, but Shidanom's booth appears to be the most popular. Later, two girls return with products from another competitor, annoying Chizado. Garage and Ariake are at the booth, having made a deal to sell some of their belongings. Yuki realizes he forgot his speech as he couldn't learn it in time due to its length. Mayfuyu says she'll print it again since she still has the file. They start distributing. The Yidawi sticks and Morishida doesn't seem to be successful initially. Several students buy Garage and Ariake's products, requesting votes for Ojima. Morishida improves in promoting the Yidawi sticks, while Mifuyu realizes she printed the story incorrectly, stating her history with Yuki. Returning to the booths, the sale of the Ojima rolls starts at 300 yen as some girls plan to cosplay and to take pictures with them. People had to buy the pastries. Later, Yuki and Oboro are taken to the stage as they were selling a manga where the protagonists look a lot like them. The audience requests them to do what's shown in the pages, but Yuki ends up fleeing. When everything seems to calm down, the candidates are called to make their speeches. Mifuyu arrives just in time to hand it to Yuki, who thanks her, saying he loves her, which unsettles her. Still, she tries to play it off with an act. Then, Shisato tells him to stop fooling around, fixes his tie. In the candidate's waiting room, the protagonist meets Tatsumi, the candidate from General Affairs, asking for his help in the campaign after the preliminaries. Both aim to defeat Shinanum, but Yuki states he has no intention of losing in the preliminaries and even less helping him. His opponent tells him that there will come a time when their paths cross, and that's when he'll decide to help him. Meanwhile, Mifuyu realizes she gave the wrong envelope to her partner, and it's now his turn to go on stage. After the incident, Mifuyu is nervous as she grabbed the wrong briefcase. Before anything happens, she decides to bring Yuki the correct speech. However, she overhears that Ojima is next to take the stage, causing her to faint. When Yuki is about to introduce himself, an announcement is made that there was a mistake and Tatsumi was supposed to go first. Yuki hears the students cheering for him, providing strong support. He notices that Tatsumi directly opposed Shinanom and enlisted some members from his department to help with the speech. Next is Shinanom's turn. Before going on stage, she asks Yuki to work hard and put effort into the speech. While she gives her speech, Mifu wakes up and runs to find Yuki to deliver the real speech. However, she fails as Yuki was already heading to the stage. Along the way, he stumbles and falls in front of everyone. People are initially speechless, but when Yuki turns and sees Shizato, he takes courage, grabs the microphone, and asks why people aren't laughing. The crowd starts cheering, and he introduces himself as Ojima to avoid confusion with Oshima. He claims to be the chosen one to stop the plan to limit club budgets and eliminate some clubs, including his own. He urges the audience to support him. Later, the food club is gathered and Yuki is exhausted. Due to the blow and nerves, he claims not to remember anything he said. Still, his friends encourage him, pointing out the great reaction from the audience, even surprising them. At that moment, the reporter arrives to conduct a special live broadcast from where the students are. As the program begins, the students watch on a computer, and it's announced that the two strongest candidates for the next round are Shinonom and Tatsumi. Without surprising the students, Yuki Ojima is mentioned as one of the candidates who caught their attention, but they only discuss his previous bad interview with the reporter. The live broadcast starts, and the students notice they are on the show, automatically changing their expressions. Later, the first updates on the votes come in, and Yuki is in third place with 8%. Hazuki reassures them not to worry, as many votes are yet to be counted and they might reach 10%. Time passes, and the first updates arrive. 
Yuki starts slowly climbing, but another candidate is closely following, making the students nervous. When they reach 10%, they realize they didn't reach 603 voters, so the happiness doesn't last long. The fourth candidate continues to rise along with Yuki, keeping them uneasy. Finally, they reach the goal, and the fourth candidate fails to get more votes, leaving the protagonist as the third candidate to pass the preliminaries. Everyone celebrates, and Garage and Ariak reward them with some of their earnings from the sales to use in the elections, as it also affects their clubs. To conclude, they celebrate in front of the camera for the people watching the live program. Later, they inform the current president that the fourth candidate was an attempt to sabotage Yuki, planned by their own department. He asks his assistants to take care of Yuki. After the events, the protagonists can't believe they managed to pass the preliminaries. They head home, but before that, Shisato asks to stop by a store. At home, they sit down, and Shisato gives her friend a portion of the chocolate they bought. Yuki tells the young woman that her brother Deiki would be proud of her, while she leaves the other portion in front of a photograph of her brother. The next day, Mori congratulates the protagonist on passing the preliminaries, but tells him that the battle is not over yet. He still needs to get voters, since his opponents have doubled his percentage. To achieve this, they consider seeking help from the girl who came in fourth, as she doesn't belong to any department, giving her a chance to win. Since Yuki isn't part of the student council and isn't involved in the internal conflict, there's a possibility of winning. Everyone gets to work on posters, flyers, and various items to restart the campaign. Yuki is cooking with Ami when she comments on how it's cute for a man to cook. This distracts Yuki, leading to him accidentally himself. Shizato, Mifu, and Izuki rush in upon hearing his scream. Aomi is stopping the bleeding with her mouth, grossing out and making the others slightly jealous. However, she becomes sad, recalling the accident that her little brother Deiki had. Yuki notices this, but Shizato asks him to continue working. Later, the young man is taking a bath since the girls suggested he rest after doing the cooking. When he's completely relaxed, Shizato arrives to take a bath as well, reminiscing about when they used to do it when they were kids. She asks why he hasn't thought of her from a different perspective. Yuki doesn't know how to respond, but Oboro arrives just in time to join the bath. Yuki hurriedly exits, saying it's not a good time. However, he realizes Chisato is no longer there. When Yuki leaves the bath, he reflects that he can't have a moment of peace. He overhears the conversation between Shinonom and Hazuki, who are having a family argument. When Yuki realizes his friend was observing him, he immediately apologizes. She asks him not to apologize or she'll give him a nickname. Hazuki takes advantage to tell Yuki not to deceive her, as he had kissed her before. This upsets Shinonom, who leaves. Later, it's bedtime, and it's Yuki's turn to sleep with Oboro. She doesn't waste time getting close and attempting to kiss him. Using the excuse of missing her pillow to sleep, she hugs Yuki, not letting him escape. After a few hours, the young man manages to free himself. After going to the bathroom, he looks for a place to sleep peacefully. However, he sees Hazuki still outside the school. Upon arriving, he notices she's somewhat intoxicated and tries to help her and take her to the dorms. She grabs him and makes him pass, and she can't reach her room alone. Once they arrive, Chisato hears that both are together, but Yuki leaves her at the entrance and leaves. Unfortunately, the girl sees him and screams since boys are forbidden in that area. Yuki tries to escape and luckily encounters Shinonom, who hides him in her room, distracting her roommates. Later, the young man tells her that he's in this predicament for trying to help Hazuki. She understands and apologizes on behalf of her sister, but doesn't understand why he helps her. According to her, no student would help their teacher. They would call someone to pick her up. Yuki replies that she's his advisor, and she suspects they have a special relationship. He denies it, and Shinonom asks if he really kissed her sister. Somewhat shyly, he admits it was an accident because she was drunk. Shinonom thinks Suzuki enjoyed it despite forcing him. Yuki insists he helps Suzuki not out of love, but because he can't leave her alone. Despite this, Shinonom invites him to stay, saying she can reward him. She takes off her sweatshirt and sits on the bed. Meanwhile, Morishida is on the school roof, lost in thought. After the incident, Yuki finds himself in Shinonom's room, and the reward he asked for playing with her while waiting for the search to stop. However, realizing they are still looking for him, Shinonom gives him the option to surrender and turn himself in, stay and live with her, or continue playing until the girls go to sleep, allowing him to leave. Yuki chooses the third option. Although if it doesn't work, he'll go with the second. Shinono warns him that her sister will get jealous, but Yuki insists Hazuki has nothing to do with this, as their kiss was just an accident. As dawn breaks, Shinono helps Yuki escape. Once outside, Yuki promises to ask his teacher about what happened. However, Shinono persists in the kissing topic. As she approaches him slowly with the intention of kissing, they hear noise. Hazuki, who is buying a drink, asks Yuki if he wants some, approaching him with a mouth full of water. 
She pretends to be about to kiss him indirectly but ends up spitting water on Yuki's face, laughing it off as a way to cool him down. They are left confused and in the distance, Morishita is watching them. Later, Yuki meets his club friends and the girls talk about a in the girls' rooms. Yuki pretends not to know anything about it, and apparently, none of the girls realize anything during the night. Shizato, however, seems a bit sad, suspecting Yuki was there and thinking he spent time with Hazuki, hearing noises from them that night. Nan suggests a courage test with an invention she created where they have to find ghost stories without getting scared. Shizato agrees since their campaign is going well, and it could help them distract and pass the time. Yuki and Shizato walk through the school corridors together. He believes the voices are from Hazuki and Aomi, saying he'll check. Shizato stops him, thinking he's concerned about them. Yuki says he's worried since they are screaming. Suddenly, Nan's invention appears before them, turning into a toilet. Yuki recalls the urban legend of the toilet ghost. Still, Shinonon doesn't fall behind and pretends to be trapped underneath, asking Yuki to save her. Confused about her actions, Yuki is taken as if he doesn't care for her, but does for the other girls. Shizato confronts him about the night's events and Yuki tries to avoid her questions, saying they were playing shoji. She becomes suspicious, thinking he was with someone else. Yuki realizes his mistake and asks why she's been acting this way lately. He requests her to stop as he will never abandon her. Shisato feels relief hearing this, but Yuki clarifies it's not that kind of love and asks if she understands. When Aomi and Hazuki arrive, Shisato leaves. After a peaceful bath, Yuki encounters Hazuki, who teases him about being the intruder in the girls' rooms, making him angry. Yuki questions why she hates him so much and why she left her house. Hazuki realizes Shinonon told him about it and that she probably sent him to ask. Changing the topic, Hazuki confesses her love to Yuki, asking him to consider it. However, at that moment, she challenges Shinonon to a competition, with Yuki as the prize. Later, both sisters compete in shoji with Yuki present. Hazuki expresses surprise that he accepted the challenge so easily. Shinonon responds that she agreed just to find out what happened in his house. Hazuki tries to distract her, implying Yuki's genuine interest in her, but Shinonon persists in the game. Hazuki unexpectedly brings up Shinonon's mother, stating that they are both in second place, as she was her father's mistress. After her mother's they got married. Hazuki suggests Shinonon should be grateful she was born after the marriage, otherwise, she would be the daughter of a mistress. Shinonon tries to stop her, but Hazuki slaps her, continuing to speak about her own struggles. Shinonon in tears apologizes and they end up in a warm hug. Meanwhile, President Mori learns through his informants that Yuki has been with Shinonon at night in her room. His assistants think Yuki might be a troublemaker, and Shinonon could use it against him. However, Mori disagrees, fearing that people could label him as a if they find out. It's a new day, and Shizato wakes up after dreaming about her deceased brother. When she wakes up, she's crying, but she quickly realizes the time and gets dressed to find Yuki, and tell him to get up since they need to start the election campaign. At school, the current president, Mori, and the Public Security Commission are in a meeting, analyzing the candidates for the elections. They couldn't run this time, but they hope that if Yuki Ojima wins, they can win in the next candidacy. They need to support Yuki, to defeat two strong candidates from different departments. Meanwhile, Chizato and Yuki arrive at school with promotional flyers. While discussing, Yuki accidentally bumps into a girl who realizes he is one of the candidates. He introduces himself as the only candidate not belonging to any department and who passed the preliminaries. The girl doesn't know him, explaining she rarely attends classes. They continue on their way, but Yuki notices Shinonom and Hazuki having an argument. He approaches them to listen, but when the teacher leaves, the first candidate for president realizes Yuki was eavesdropping and calls him Sopalanjima, annoying him because she always gives him nicknames. She then asks why they were arguing, thinking everything was fine between them. Shinonom explains that her sister cheated her in a shoji game, distracting her with her past story, and it worked. Shizato, who was behind them, asks what's not that important and what they were talking about. Later, on the way, Shizato feels sad, jealous, and angry, but Yuki tries to understand why she feels that way, and she avoids answering. When they join the others, who complain because they are late, Hazuki approaches Yuki and thanks him for what he did the night before for her and her sister, as they were able to resolve the issue. Nan gathers everyone to show them the new invention she created for the elections. She presses a button on a queue that transforms into a large stage, the path all students will take to go to classes, chosen by Mifuyu. Yuki thanks her again and tells her he loves her, asking her to be a couple, but she rejects him. Then they realize Chisato is not following the act, and when they call her, she says it's time to start delivering campaign flyers. Shiohama the reporter appears as her boss assigned her to report on him during the election. Yuki hopes they both do a great job. Later, everyone gets in position to start the campaign. 
Some hand out flyers, others energize the stage, and Yuki gives his speech in front of the students. However, Shimanom is also giving a speech, and candidate Tatsumi addresses his department colleagues, believing they have a chance to ascend without the presence of the Public Security Commission. However, they have a strong opponent this year, so they shouldn't worry. While everyone is doing their job, Yuki sees some students bothering Ami. He's about to go help, but Chizato stops him, saying they are campaigning, and it might look bad. Two students from the Security Commission ask for the identification of the girls, but they refuse, claiming they did nothing wrong. The students insist, having witnessed the situation and suspecting they violated the student code by verbally ab Ami. They ask the girls to report to the Public Security Commission when called. When Hizuki arrives, Shisato tells her everything is fine with Ami, but she still seems concerned for the Security Commission members. Ami thanks Yuki for helping her. He asks about the financial funds the scholarship students receive, and Shiohama explains they work for companies to finance their studies, but are prohibited from engaging in other activities or joining clubs. Yuki requests Mifu to change some things in her speech, including ending and against scholarship students. Later, the Security Commission receives a girl who feels like she has returned to school after her parole. She asks President Mori to tell them the story of Ojima. Before leaving, she mentions that Osawa Yuina has finally returned to her position as the head of the Public Security Commission. Meanwhile, Yuki continues campaigning in clubs with Chisato, who questions the necessity of his new policy. She thinks it might make many people not vote for him, and she doesn't understand why he's doing it. She believes he might be trying to impress the reporter or because he cares about Ami. Yuka explains that he can't stand injustice, as while they talk, someone is probably hurting another student. Tearfully, Chisato asks why he is leaving her behind, feeling distant from him. Yuki tells her not to think that way, as he will always be by her side. Later, Mori tells Osala about Yuki Ojima, believing he is a good candidate. However, what interests her more is if he will play on their side, meaning if they can use him as a puppet president from their commission. Warren responds that they are only helping him win, and she mentions that it's likely the Shadow Team will try to leave Yuki behind, although she considers it a joke. Meanwhile, the protagonist and his friends receive the new approval ratings, and his is the highest with a minimal difference from Shinonome. Later, Yuki, Chisato, and Mifu head home discussing how their friend reached those numbers. Suddenly, they hear a horn, and the recycling club's car is speeding toward them. They see Morishita sitting on the side trying to play the harmonica. Yuki asks for it to check if it's broken, but accidentally blows on it. Chisato yells at him as they had an indirect kiss. Morishita blushes and says it's okay since it's him, but Chisato doesn't like it at all and accuses Yuki of doing it on purpose. Yuki tries to escape, but a truck honks, hitting him. In that moment, Chisato recalls her deceased brother's accident and screams in despair for her friend. The chapter begins with the childhood memories of Chisato and Yuki, where the protagonist tells his mother that he doesn't want to go to school. However, Chisato arrives and gives him a piece of chocolate, and he accepts it, making the girl happy. Every day, she would give chocolate to Yuki, and he would accept it without any problem. However, one day, he got tired of it and refused. This made Chisato very sad, recalling a time when she refused to share her chocolate bar with her younger brother, who later passed away. She starts crying and pleads with Yuki to accept the chocolate and not disappear. The boy is surprised by her unexpected behavior, but accepts the chocolate, assuring her that he will never disappear. Returning to the present, the girls are at the hospital and Chisato can't stop crying. Her friend tries to comfort her, but Yuki arrives seemingly unharmed from the accident. He asks her not to worry and Chisato rushes to hug him, worried about his well-being. While they are in each other's arms, President Mori passes by with a bouquet of flowers. Meanwhile, Shinonon learns about the accident and rushes to the food research club to confirm if it's true. The members confirm it, but luckily, Yuki is unharmed. Shinonon feels relieved in trying to conceal her concern, playfully gives Yuki a nickname for being silly. Yuki hears this as he arrives after being at the hospital, and says he's fine except for Chizato, who won't stop hugging him. When they return to his apartment, she still doesn't want to let go, so they enter his room. While in his room, he asks her to release him as he needs to change. When he takes off his jacket, Morishia's harmonica falls, revealing the name Kana in the registration. Later, when he tries to take a shower, Chizato continues to look at him with a sad gaze, unwilling to let him go. Yuki apologizes, not expecting this to happen, and asks her understandingly to let him go. As she refuses, he takes off his shirt and opens the shower, accidentally breaking the mirror in anger. In a low voice, he hears Chisato calling him a liar as he promised not to disappear and always stay by her side. Yuki yells that he hasn't gone anywhere as he is right in front of her, but she keeps calling him a liar. To make her come to her senses, Yuki gives her a slap. She runs out but returns with a chocolate bar, asking him to eat it and say it's delicious. She apologizes and says he should stay with her. 
Yugi asks if she knows who he is, and she becomes confused. He asks again who he is, and if she will always see him as Deiki's replacement. He mentions they can't call it love because she always sees him that way. He tells her he won't eat chocolate anymore, and she pleads with him, reminding him of his promise to always be with her. Yuki angrily tells her that he has always been there and will be, but not as a replacement for her brother, but as Yuki Ojima. He asks her to eat the chocolate, but when she tries, she ends up spitting it out. Later, both are in their rooms, but unable to sleep due to what had happened. The next day, the protagonist returns to school to continue his campaign with all the club members. Later, Yuki goes to the club room, where Morishita is and notices an unusual aura coming from him. She realizes he's not as happy as he appears after seeing the new approval ratings. He returns Morishita's harmonica and confesses that he fixed it as a reward for taking it without permission. She starts playing a melody and mentions not knowing the song's name, but that her best friend Kana taught her when she gave her that harmonica. However, Kana disappeared some time ago, so Morishita entered the school to look for her but still doesn't know where she is. At that moment, Mori enters, mentioning Kana, thinking she is there but realizing otherwise. She tries to cover it up, asking about the campaign manager as she needed to talk to her about some advice she requested. Yuki, saying she didn't attend because she didn't feel well and decided to take the day off, draws Mori's attention. The president approaches him and tells him not to worry about changing policies at the moment as it's irrelevant. He should only focus on winning the elections and the issue of scholarship students can be addressed once he is elected. Osawa is alone in her public security commission room, talking on the phone. She mentions feeling upset because Mori continues to support and help Yuki. Later, Yuki is at the hospital for further medical examinations, but as he makes a call, he collides with a girl he seems to know. However, he sees Mori again, this time managing to follow her outside, where she's angrily talking on the phone about a deal she made with someone from the public security committee, blaming Osawa for what happened with Kana. Yuki recalls the girl who is Morishita's friend. At that moment, he hides as Mori returns to the hospital. He follows her to the elevator, leading to the last floor, where everything is dark in a dead-end corridor. However, in one of the rooms, he can read the name Kana. He decides to enter and finds the girl with open eyes but unresponsive. In a corner of the room, Mori asks him about his relationship with her. Before Yuki can respond, he is struck from behind and loses consciousness. When he wakes up, he is tied up, and President Mori and her assistants are in front of him. They decided to let him go with the condition that he doesn't tell anyone about what he saw. Yuki accepts. Mori then decides to tell him the whole truth. The public security department can't monitor everything happening in the large institution, so they hired special agents to pose as ordinary students. Kana was assigned to him with her companion Morishita. After the events, Mori tells the protagonist that the academy generates a lot of money, and every year the institution can collect tens of billions. Kana was trapped in a fund negotiation, and while investigating, she had an accident, being hit by a car. The individuals involved managed to erase the evidence she had gathered, and since then, she has been hospitalized. To ensure the safety of the agents, her accident has been kept secret. Now there are two problems, and one of them is Osawa. Meanwhile, Chisato is still saddened by what happened, and Mifuyu visits her. She asks what happened, seeing her in distress, and requests her company, mentioning the upcoming campaign. If they don't win, their club will disappear, but Chisato is no longer interested. Back with Yuki, the president informs him that they agreed to admit the girl to that hospital if Osawa becomes the head of the Public Security Commission. Bojima looks upset, but Mori asks him what he would have done. Perhaps he would have abandoned her, just as he did with Chisato when he rejected her chocolate. After her friend lost her brother, she depended on him, but he rejects her due to his sin. He swore to be Daiki's replacement for her sake. If she were to surpass her deceased brother one day, Yuki would no longer be useful to her. Meanwhile, Mifu asks her friend if she had a fight with Yuki. After confirming, Mifu deduces it easily, being her best friend. She tries to cheer her up, asking her to stand up, but Chizata refuses. Mifu suggests talking about it to feel better and heads to the closet. Despite Chizato's attempts to stop her, it's too late. Opening it, she drops a box full of chocolate bars. Mifu hopes Chizato hasn't used Yuki as a replacement for her brother. She knows Chizato likes Yuki and suggests seeing him differently. Angry, Chisato tells Mifuyu to leave her alone and worry about herself, knowing Mifuyu also likes Yuki. She urges her friend to confess because they'll both be better off, causing Mifuyu to hug her to stop her hurtful words. Mori informs Yuki that his regime is about to end. When that happens, they'll investigate his funds, and they'll realize they were diverted to admit Kana. If they discover this, she won't be able to continue her treatments. Desperate, she met Ojima and hoped to continue with his campaign. In the middle of the hub, Shisato apologizes to her friend, needing someone to forgive her for being selfish with her younger brother, who isn't there to accept her apology. 
She confirms she likes Yuki, but can't do anything to make him and her brother happy. Mifu feels sorry for what she hears and decides to change her clothes, expressing gratitude to Chisato for helping her after her surgery. Chisato remains upset. After changing, Mifu wears Chisato's clothes, revealing the scar on her stomach. She says she can't let only Chisato go through the bad memories of the past, and she runs out of the room, heading to the elevator. She wants to show her true self, something she never liked. Despite Chisato's attempts to stop her, she reaches her on the first floor, stopping her with a hug. Mifu apologizes, not wanting her to suffer. Chisato insists that she shouldn't suffer either, believing that her brother won't be happy unless she is. Mifu tells her that he will be very happy if she is happy since many people think of him anyway. Later, President Mori asks the protagonist to keep the secret about Kana from everyone, even Morishida, who is her friend. If he doesn't, she'll have to resort to the public security department to make him accountable. She leaves saying their relationship ends there, thinking she could have put up more of a fight. She mentions that despite everything, she'll try to ensure her effort wasn't in vain and will do her best to prevent their club from being dissolved. Yuki responds that for him, everything hasn't been in vain as he plans to win the elections. In the hospital, Morishida and another person watch over Kana. Osawa is still proud, observing after withdrawing her support from Yuki's campaign. In the club, the members are excited as Ojima has the highest percentage in the polls. Hazuki tells them they only need the speech making Yuki more nervous. Mifu proposes an idea to deal with his nervousness. Later, Yuki and Chisato seem to be heading to a date organized by Mifu. At a traffic light, they hear a man having trouble on the phone, and he runs towards them, asking for a favor as he needed a couple for a ceremony. Later, Chisato enters a church dressed as a bride, with Yuki waiting at the altar. After exchanging vows, they are about to kiss, but the priest reminds them to only pretend. After it's over, children give them a bouquet for their wedding. The protagonist recalls a childhood memory when they did the same thing, not understanding what love was back then. Chisato seems to have the same memory and shares it with Yuki. He starts thinking he might have been in love with her, but he was too young to realize. In the evening, they head home after spending a lovely afternoon together. However, Chisato stops as she wants to kiss Yuki. As they are about to kiss, he is attacked from behind, falling unconscious into Chisato's arms. She is also attacked and carried away, leaving the protagonist unconscious alone on the ground. After the events, the protagonist's phone starts ringing, and when he answers, a distressed voice tells him that they have Chisato. To ensure her safety, the young man must do as instructed, one of which is to go to the phone booth at the school. Upon arrival, he notices no one is there, but the phone in the booth starts ringing. When he answers, the same person instructs him to go to another phone booth near the park within 30 minutes. They also warn him not to talk to anyone about what's happening, at least until the elections are over. Meanwhile, in the hospital, Kana wakes up and Morishia with Mori is there to accompany her. Upon waking, she inquires about her investigation, and the president asks her not to worry. However, she begins recounting that she remembers photographing a fraudulent agreement that day. As she is about to reveal more, Osawa arrives to fetch Mori since it's election day and the president cannot be late, so he heads there. Meanwhile, in the club, everyone is waiting for Yuki, as the voting is about to begin. The reporter receives a notification and asks Mifu to check the official page to confirm its veracity. They all learn that the protagonist is accused of breaking the rules. Mifu calls him, but after hearing a rumor, he hangs up due to limited time. When he reaches the next phone, he can't access it, so he climbs the fence. After falling and getting he answers the phone. The caller congratulates him for staying silent during the call and leaves a piece of Chisato's uniform as a reward. To find out more about her, they give him the next address. Meanwhile, Mifuyu mentions Yuki turned off his phone and Hizuki can't contact Chisato, causing concern as they are about to decide who will be the first candidate to give a speech. In the hospital, Osawa visits Kana with the intention of learning more about the agreement she photographed. Kana reveals that despite not remembering the people involved, there are other photos proving it. Morishiga understands Kana's intentions and subtly signals her not to reveal the location of the photos. Before she does, Osawa notices the time and leaves, telling Morishiga to take care. Back at the club, Mori arrives, desperate after learning Yuki is missing. Ami arrives, and Shevhama apologizes for having a connection with their executives, allowing them to use the budget for emergencies, provided they overlook the issue. They deduce that if Ojuma doesn't appear, people will think he fled to avoid questioning. The protagonist reaches the next phone but is directed to another meeting point during his speech time. Some students see him in bad condition and question why he's not at school for his speech. Ignoring them, he runs again. Meanwhile, the candidate's speeches have started, with Tatsui going first. Later, Shinonome finishes her speech and it's Yuki's turn, but he is reaching his next phone. The person on the line instructs him to tell people that he didn't show up for the elections out of fear. If he does, they will reveal Chisato's whereabouts. 
However, when the person is about to disclose the next meeting point, the call is intercepted by President Mori, who informs Yuki that Chisato is in a storage vault, while President Mori confronts Osawa, revealing that he discovered her role in the plan. Kana had called him earlier, and photos taken on the accident day were automatically transferred to Osawa's phone. The pictures showed deals between public safety and general affairs, including Osawa driving the car that hit her. Despite her arrest, Oso remains composed, blaming Mori for not following orders and believing that Ojima has no chance of winning. Yuki reaches the vault and finds Chisato asleep. Upon waking her, he asks about the elections, but she kits him, emphasizing the importance of the vote since many students depend on him. Yuki initially thinks it's too late, but their two friends arrive on bicycles, rushing them to the school. As Aomi and Mifu try to stall, Ojima arrives just in time for his speech. Disheveled, he takes the stage, but as he's about to speak, the bell rings, signaling the end of his allotted time. Anoi Yuki still tries to address everyone, but the host takes away the microphone. Shinanum intervenes, requesting fair time for Ojima as the student council president. Tatsumi supports the request, and Mori, through a call, grants Yuki the chance to deliver his speech properly. In his heartfelt speech, Yuki admits that he initially joined the race to save his club and received help from Mori due to his experience. He wanted to address student abuse, but was denied. Regardless, he expresses love for all students and hopes they support him with their votes. Even if he loses, he's happy to convey this message. The crowd applauds. Days later, everyone gathers at the club as Yuki Ojima wins the elections, surprising even Mori. Yuki won without making promises or engaging in conflict with opponents. Shirunon, the vice president, arrives, seeking Yuki for some matters, but Hazuki informs her that both he and Shisato have an important affair. They visit Daiki's grave, leaving a chocolate bar. As they eat another chocolate, Yuki takes a bite and Shizato kisses him, saying this chocolate tastes better. It's a new day, and after the elections, the protagonist couldn't celebrate much as he immediately started with his duties, which proved challenging. However, the weekend arrives, and the young man thinks he can finally rest. Still, he has to help Shizato make a dessert, suggesting they start with something basic like a dessert called kuzibyu. However, Shizato gets offended, considering it just starch and sugar dissolved in water, leaving her feeling sad. Since they have a victory party for saving the club, she wants to prepare something special. The protagonist stands up and asks her to join him. While waiting, he begins choosing ingredients, suggesting they make cookies since they are hard to mess up, making Chisato happy. Shinanam arrives to take the protagonist for financial matters, but Chisato insists he'll spend the day helping her with desserts for the celebration. She orders Shinanam to leave, who doesn't like it, appearing somewhat jealous. She mentions Yuki is now the new president, having more important duties than spending time on club matters. However, Chisato, as the Food Investigation Club chief, tells Shinanam to obey and not cause trouble. She then asks the young man to tell her they agree to spend the day together and confirms it. While they argue, Ayum arrives with her friends. Chisato is surprised they know Shinanam, and one of them is her cousin. The girls came to return the borrowed uniforms as they used them for the cafe. Seeing ingredients on the table, the young man explains he was teaching Chisato to make cookies. However, Shinanum intervenes, stating that he has student council matters to attend to instead of wasting time on cookies. They argue again, but one of the girls suggests settling with a contest. Each girl brings two assistants. The protagonist is again in the judging spot while the girls start their preparations. Yuki, seeing the nervousness of both girls, takes out his best dessert. The Ojima rolls, asking them to try it as he should also have a verdict on his dessert. Shinanum is the first to taste it and is delighted. Later, they decide to continue the competition, but Chisato interrupts, asking them not to continue as it's pointless. Shinanom agrees, stating they can't be judged by someone who prepares an excellent dessert. Ayum takes charge, choosing Shinanom to be the first to present her result. After trying it, Yuki tells her it's delicious, making her happy. Next is Chisato, who is very nervous, but Yuki praises her, saying she has surpassed herself and made excellent cookies that everyone in the club will enjoy. Chisato gets emotional, falling over. Lastly, it's time for the verdict, but Shinanam stops it, declaring herself a loser this time. She congratulates her opponent. Later, everyone eats happily and both girls compliment each other on the deliciousness of their desserts. Yuki Ojima looks at them affectionately, remembering Shinanom's words that their meals bring happiness to people.